If you're just joining us, you've been following some breaking news in the old north side where IFD has been on the scene of a duplex fire. Yeah, we're told the call came in just before 4 a.m. at 20th and College Avenue, which is about a block north of Country Kitchen, if you're familiar. Our CIA New Yorker is live there with the very latest. And Sia, what are you now learning? Yes, good morning, Matthew. Good morning, Jalea. Actually, I can tell you firefighters just left this scene after they were here for hours for a fire here at this home right here in the middle. They were focused on the home in the middle, but the two homes on the sides of it were also affected. At this time, they are not sure how the fire started. They are still investigating that, but they tell us that one firefighter in the process was sent to the hospital with slight injuries. We're hoping that he makes a recovery. They tell us also that this house right here in the middle was vacant. The one here to the left of it was unoccupied at the time. Thankfully, no one was in there. They're still working again to put all of this information together. As you can see, the roads here just opened back up. There were some traffic detours, but I'm going to send it back into Lindsay Monroe to tell you more about that. Lindsay? Yeah, some good news there that uh, that scene has since cleared on College Avenue. So back in business there on the near north side. Now, however, on the south side, still got some closures. This is going to be some construction related closures. They're the ramps on the west side of Harding Street on and off 465 eastbound and westbound. These are anticipated to stay blocked at least through late November. They're basically resurfacing them as this big 69 expansion project continues. And this is also a stretch of 465 that had some work being done over the weekend. And as you can see, these westbound lanes here at Man Road still being impacted by some lane restrictions. Now, as of right now, we're not looking at any major backups in either direction of 465 on the south side, but we will let you know if we do see any issues develop. Guys. All right. Thank you, Lindsay. New this morning, IFD is releasing body cam video of another fire. This one was from Sunday night. You know, we're told a family of five and their dog are displaced after the blaze caused major damage to the southeast side home. This is what the scene looked like on Salago Drive near Troy and Arlington Avenues. You can see firefighters running to the blaze. The family reported to investigators that they heard a loud boom before smelling smoke. We're told no injuries were reported in the fire, and right now the cause is still under investigation. I was crying. It was relief. It was, we need to get home now. That's parents' reaction after a shooting at a youth football game over the weekend. You're looking at the aftermath Saturday night where police say a fight between parents and coaches escalated to a shooting. Right now we know one man is still in critical condition. The other is expected to be OK. Metro police tell us the two were shot Saturday night just after 10 at Cardinal Riddle High School. That's where a youth football league was holding its football game. Now police tell us the game was wrapping up when an argument broke out between the two sidelines, which included parents and coaches. Police say someone then pulled out a gun and shot two people. It's a very sad and unfortunate ending to a football game. I mean, people come to watch football games and play for fun. Families and kids should be able to go to enjoy a Little League football game and not expect to get shot. So it's very, it's very sad. It is. And right now, Metro Police have not released any suspect information or who pulled the trigger. Detectives have been looking for security footage to figure out who all was involved. Again, it is important to note that the shooting happened in Cardinal Ritter parking lot. Again, the school had nothing to do with this. Well, IMPD detectives this morning are also working another deadly shooting on the city's west side. This one happened Saturday afternoon near 12th and Tibbs. Officers say they initially responded to a call of shots being fired in that area. When they got to the scene, they quickly discovered a man who had been shot. Officers say they tried to help him before paramedics got to the scene, but it was unfortunately too late. Alma Reyes lives near that area and she heard the screams and gunshots. I was just um, laying down and I got scared. Then I heard a gut wrenching scream. So we all came outside and we saw this woman. She was screaming. Police really want tips in this case. They're asking if you saw a speeding car or even suspicious people in that area between 2.30 and 3.30 on Saturday to please reach out. You can call police directly or reach out to Crime Stoppers anonymously. 
This morning, police are trying to piece together the moments before a deadly shooting on the city's east side. It happened early Saturday morning on Culver Street near 42nd and Emerson Avenue. That's where IMPD investigators found a man dead in a driveway with gunshot wounds. No word yet on if police made any arrest or know the reason behind this shooting. Of course, as we learn more information, we'll be sure to pass it along to you. Well, in just a few hours, a man found guilty in the attack of several women in downtown Indianapolis will be sentenced. A jury convicted Victor Johnson of attacking a woman in September, stemming back to June of 2020. That attack happened on Fayette Street just an hour after that attack. Police say they were alerted to another attack on Alabama and New York streets. Witnesses say they heard screaming and saw a man with a knife. The next day, Johnson attacked a group of veterans at a memorial park. He, a jury convicted him on 13 of 22 counts. Well, we're also working to find out if police have any leads on what led up to a deadly crash on Indy's north side. This was Saturday morning on North Keystone Avenue, where EMS were called in to help get one of the victims to the hospital, but they unfortunately didn't survive. IMPD told 13 News that the person was riding a bike. We have reached out to find out if anyone else went to the hospital or was hurt in that crash. We've also asked if police have any arrest in this case. We'll keep you updated. Hey, tonight the City County Council is meeting and they're voting on several key proposals. Yeah, we know on the agenda is the approval of the proposed Indianapolis City budget for next year. It comes in at $1.6 billion, which is about $90 million more than this year. It includes investments into things like public safety, infrastructure, as well as anti-violence efforts. Also on the agenda, a final vote on a proposal to curb illegal street takeovers and these spinning events that we have seen so many times here in Indianapolis, especially recently. So now this proposal would impose fines on anyone who planned, participated in, or attended one of those events. And a final vote is also expected tonight for a proposal to give raises to poll workers. Now, if approved, the increases would take effect for this upcoming election. We do plan to have a crew at tonight's meeting, so watch for updates right here on 13 News. Fighting breast cancer one step at a time. Thousands were at Military Park on Saturday for this year's Susan G. Komen More Than Pink Walk. It brought out thousands of survivors and their families, and it's an event that raises thousands of dollars for research, but it's more about celebrating and honoring these women. It's just a sisterhood, and it's just a lot of love, a lot of comfort, a lot of, just a lot of friendships are, are built through this, and it, it's a wonderful community. They see that it's, it's, more, it's more than just them that are going through this, and we're helping them every step of the way. And the walk is just one part of the research and fundraising. If you still want to donate to the Komen Foundation, you have until November 3rd, and there is a link that will connect you directly at WTHR.com. Yeah, what a great, what a great walk. Mm -hmm. Well, this morning, a monumental birthday for a major institution right here in Indianapolis. Riley Children's Hospital turns 100 years old. The hospital has served the community for more than a century. Later today, they will celebrate the major milestone, recognizing the decades of work towards pediatric care and research. It's happening at Riley Children's Hospital at 315 this afternoon. We will have more on this celebration coming up later today, right here on 13 News. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Matthew 610 and folks, Milton is now a category two hurricane, 100 mile per hour winds. While we get a cooler start today, watch Milton gain steam as a category four tomorrow, reaching Tampa tomorrow afternoon, potentially as a category three hurricane. Will this have an effect on us? No, it's going right out in the Atlantic after it battles Florida. But again, a cooler start for us. We'll have more on the week ahead in your seven day outlook. All right, thank you, Chuck. The streak goes on and not in our favor. This morning, the Colts missing out on another win, failing to snap that losing streak against the Jags. What the team needs to do to turn it around in this morning's Colts wake up call is coming up soon at 645. And this morning, it's now been a year since the deadly October 7th Hamas terrorist attack killing more than 1,200 people. We'll walk you through the steps ahead at 615.